never let anyone take your joy from you. I call myself a joyful warrior. <laughs> right? Never let anyone take your joy from you. You do what you got to do. And isn't that a wonderful way to live, to know you have purpose? <laughs> Well, there you go. What's going on, party people? What is going on? It's your ride share extraordinaire, your super duper Uber drivers here, guys. Yes, thank you, thank you. You guys, you already know the deal. Before you hop in my ride, do me a favor, hit the like, hit that subscribe, poor favor. <laughs> Come on, let's do this. Hop on in, buckle in, and let's go. Yeah! Okay, okay. Party people, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, thank you for hitting that subscribe button. All right, Ken, folks, what are we talking about today, folks? What are we talking about today? Man, it's been a month since the great debate between Donald Trump and Mr. Biden. And ever since then, we had four weeks of nonstop news. We've been drowning in news. Every day you wake up, is something breaking, right? From that, we had the assassination attempt on Donald Trump. We've had the FBI resigning, even though she's supposed to have been fired. We've had... Mr. Biden dropping his submission on X with no header and the signature is looking funny. And then yesterday he gets on and does a mini state of union address to officially says that he's not seeking reelection and he's passing the torch to Kamala. What's Joe Biden going to do? Is he going to stay in the race? Is he going to drop out? Here's my answer. I am running and we're going to win. I'm not going to change that. You know, in recent weeks, it's become clear to me that I need to unite my party in this critical endeavor. So I've decided the best way forward is to pass the torch to a new generation. That's the best way to unite our nation. Now, the brainwashing campaign has begun. Because we all know that Kamala is the brightest AKA we ever had. She's smart. She's beautiful. She's funny. What else do we know about this population, 18 through 24? They are stupid. <laughs> that is why we put them in dormitories. And they have a resident assistant. They make really bad decisions. She's all that and a bag of chips. And so when Mr. Biden had appointed her border czar in 2020, that's all a lie. That never happened. OK. As the border crisis escalates, President Biden is putting the vice president in charge. When she speaks, she speaks for me. Doesn't have to check with me. She knows what she's doing. The work will not be easy. Uh, but it is important work. Yeah. And so the question has come up, and you heard it here, and, and you'll, you'll hear it again, I'm sure, is why not visit the border? Why not see what Americans are seeing in this crisis? Well, we are going to the border. We have to deal with what's happening at the border. There's no question about that. The vice president's position on asylum seekers is evolving, too. In 2017, she tweeted, say it loud, say it clear. Everyone is welcome here. Now, the opposite. I want to be clear to folks in this region who are thinking about making that dangerous trek to the United States-Mexico border. Do not come. The media says that that never happened. We all made that up. She was never the border czar. 
has never actually border czar. Border czar, uh, which was not something that was formally conveyed upon her. She's been labeled incorrectly by some members of the right as the border czar. Republicans named her the border czar. Republicans have always exaggerated what her job was at the border. Republicans, again, have labeled her the border czar. But that's not exactly what President Biden asked her to do. She was never put in charge of the border. That wasn't actually her task, not to secure it, but to address the underlying roots of migration. She was charged with leading the administration's efforts to address the root causes of migration. The root causes of migration to the U.S. The root causes. Root causes. Root causes. The root causes. Root causes. Of immigration. We also want to point out that right now, apprehension numbers continue to decrease in our country, especially over the last few months. And I just want to note that border crossings have been going down. And illegal border crossings are lower right now. Migrant crossings continue to drop. Border crossings are way down. Border crossings are down. Just like that. It never happened. Now, the next thing they're going to say, if you give her any criticism, you say anything about her hair, her looks, you're racist, you're sexist, right? Since the vice president became the presumptive presidential nominee for the Democratic Party, of which I am not a member, I have heard her referred to as a DEI hire. I have heard her referred to as one of those people. I've been told that she slept her way to the top. I have had people tell me that the White House is going too woke and that Kamala Harris is only vice president because of CRT. Every single one of those things was told to me by a woman who looks similar to myself. Now we have a clip here of this knucklehead here. I don't even know his name, but he's a congressman. And he gets on and says, if you say anything about DEI, that's code word for n This is an organization, this is a right-wing campaign that's going to be racist, misogynistic against the vice president. But we're going to stand on the issues and what really matters. It's the fact that she is qualified. They want to call her a DEI president or DEI candidate, she has more experience than Trump and J.D. Vance combined times a million, right? She she worked at the state level. She was the attorney general. She's vice president of the United States. She was a, a senator representing one of the largest states in the entire country. And so these are just racist dog whistles. Whenever you hear DEI, I want you to think about the N-word. I want you to think about racial slurs. That's what they actually mean. Okay, so dog whistles. All right. How about we have Mr. Biden in broad daylight calling Kamala a year? Together we make history not erase it. To me, the values of diversity, equality, inclusion are literally, and that's not kidding, the core strengths of America. That's why I'm proud to have the most diverse administration in history. It taps into the full talents of our country and starts at the top with the vice president. Not only that, you cannot mention anything about her accomplishments. Only Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren, what has she done since she's been vice president? Oh, I have to say, uh, since the Dobbs opinion, the way that she has rallied women uh, and friends of women, also called men, uh, around this country on the issue of abortion and just taken it home. Uh, First uh, vice president in history to visit an abortion clinic. Go get him. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Hey, guys in Michigan. Hey, guys in Pennsylvania. Hey, guys in Wyoming. You hear that? Kamala Harris visited an abortion clinic. Okay? Now, I hope that helps out in your neck of the woods. <laughs> guys. Let's not forget, this is the same media just a few weeks ago was telling us how great and smart and strong and vigorous that Joe Biden is. The same one. After the debate, just a month ago, the veil came down and exposed all the lies and they threw him overboard. After they threw him overboard, after he done signed and said, okay, I give, I surrender. Now he's such a great man. He did this for the country. 
He's looking out for the country. Just a few weeks ago, he said he's not stepping down. Only God Almighty can take him down. <laughs> We're not going to do that. You sure? Well, yeah, sure. Look, I mean, if the Lord Almighty came out and said, Joe, get out of the race, I get out of the race, the Lord Almighty's not coming down. But he saw the light. Mr. Barack Obama made him come down. And as soon as he came down, oh, he's a great guy. He did such something great for the country. He looked for country first. This weekend, President Biden made the kind of decision only a true patriot can make, choosing to pass the torch and to step away from the presidency at the conclusion of his term. I know President Biden's decision wasn't an easy one, but once again, he put the needs of his country and our future first. It's a bittersweet moment, but one that fills every single one of us who know President Biden with limitless gratitude. Now the media has turned their brightest and trying to tell us that Kamala, Kamala Harris is the smartest, the most accomplished. Come on, <laughs> this has got to be bizarro land. Are we going to fall for this? Are we going to fall for this, guys? Unbelievable. But I can't wait for September 21st if she don't back out of the, the debate. So many of you have been asking me about the debate, and I'll tell you, I'm ready to debate Donald Trump. Um, I have agreed to the previously agreed upon September 10th debate. He agreed to that previously. Now it appears he's backpedaling. But I'm ready. And I think the voters deserve to see the split screen that exists in this race on a debate stage. And so I'm ready. Let's go. Will you do it on Debbie Fox Comment News? On the protest. I think they're going to have her hiding in the basement for at least a month or two. Because sooner or later she's going to say something stupid. She don't have the energy like Donald Trump to go crisscrossing the country campaigning. She don't have that. She don't have that. So they're going to do the same thing they did with Biden, put her in the basement, let her study some notes, right? Program her, reprogram her, and set her back out before the debates. Because September 21st is right around the corner. And I don't think she got it. I really don't think she got it. So, Mr. Trump, treat her with kid glove. Treat her like the retard that she is. Can I say retard? Oh, shit, I already said it. Treat her like the special need child that she is. Don't go at her because you got a lot of sensitive men out here who's crying on CNN, Bakari, Van Jones, Don Lemon. He's not on there no more, but you know what I'm saying. So treat her like a retard. Let her talk. Let her ramble on like she always do. She's going to laugh herself silly. And just, <laughs> just give it a mic. Man, I can't wait. September 21st, I'm circling it already. If you guys got any value out of my content, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. You see that notification bell? Turn on that notification bell so you get my latest and greatest. Share this content with your best friends. And tell your mama I said hi. <laughs> all right, all right. Till next time, guys, I'll see you again. And uh, Kamala, get your ass off my lawn.